I'm sorry guys, my camera stops turning off and not working, so I have to make this video in multiple parts. I apologize. So what I was saying was people who were not affected by the Great Depression would wear clothes that were cut on the bias, the sewing term. It just means that when you cut clothes on the bias, they are very, they're drapey and they hang and they um, kind of like um, hang around the body a little bit easier. And so they create more of that curvy, clingy silhouette. Here are some pictures of 1930s swimwear. So you can see the swimwear is being a little bit more normal as far as what we are used to today. Then we have the World War II era in the 1940s. I really, really like the 40s. It's probably one, it's one of my favorite um, eras as far as fashion, personally. I just really like what the women wore. Um, and so what was important that you understand, though, is that men's fashion stopped progressing until after the war. Um, a reflection that most men were serving in uniforms instead of enjoying life at home. Women's fashion echoed men's traditional clothing with man's tailored dresses, coats, and hats. These new serious looks were not about an idealized life, but more about supporting the war effort through fashion. Um, so here are some pictures of what men would wear. Women favored the convertible suit. It was a short jacket, an A-line um, knee-length skirt, and blouse which could easily be transformed into evening wear by shedding the jacket once the workday was over. The inverted triangle was a very popular silhouette at the time. That just means the triangle upside down. Um, the shoulders were really broad because women, remember women echoed men's fashions. And one of the most prominent features on a man is their broad shoulders. And so women um, took on that silhouette by having shoulder pads and having broad shoulders. With no silk stockings available, many women gave the illusion of stockings by drawing a line at the back of their legs with eyeliner. Um, stockings, nylons weren't available anymore because it was all going towards the war effort, but women would still um, want to have the look of nylons, and so they would have their legs painted, and then they would draw the nylons back then, or had black lines down the back of the legs, that was the style, and so they'd paint a back on the back of their legs a black line to give the illusion that they were still wearing nylons. Here's some more um, dresses from the 40s. I love the hair in the 40s, those big barrel curls. And then the women were thrown into the workplace and then told to leave once the men returned. It was like all the men went to war and society was like, oh crap, we need people to like come and work in their fields and work on the and work in the um, factories and things like that, or we're gonna go under. Women, come work for us. And then as soon as the men returned, they were like, ah. You're good. Bye. And so, um, however, women now had their eyes open to the opportunities available to them. And this is kind of when the biggest fight for uh, equal rights between men and women kind of started to happen as far as women wanting to have careers instead of just be homemakers. This is what my this is the look that I love. The picture on the right is probably one of my favorite fashion looks of all time. If I was if I was um, growing up or I guess an adult in the 40s. I feel like this is what I would wear every single day. Like the trousers, the white button-up shirt, and the headband, like every day. I am obsessed with this look. Women began wearing slacks because they were now part of the workforce. So this is when pants really became the most popular for women was the 40s. Up until this point, women didn't wear pants at all. Um, the 40s is when women started wearing pants. Rose of the Riveter became a really popular icon for women in society because this is what the look this is women taking over the workforce. And um, so if you've seen this poster or this um, replica anywhere, this is called, her name is Rosie the Riveter, and it's basically saying that women can do everything men can do. The Eisenhower jacket and the bomber jacket were influenced by the servicemen's uniforms. Um, as you can see, Marilyn Monroe was were, is, um, rocking the bomber jacket right there. The, the funny thing is, is bomber jackets and Eisenhower jackets have kind of always been in style ever since they came out in the 40s. They go, they come and go. Like, there's obviously times where people aren't wearing them, but I've seen them reappear several times throughout just my, um, like, my life from when I was a child to an adult. And so I'm sure you'll see, I, they're not really, I don't really see them right now, but I, I guarantee they'll be back at some point. I am, this was a huge jacket when I was in high school. Like, the bomber jackets and Eisenhower coats were very, very, very popular in high school. Here is a picture of the Eisenhower jacket. This is where the, this is my favorite look in the 40s. I love this look so much. It literally just makes me so happy. This is called the new look. And this goes into the 40s and the 50s. You can tell that it kind of has a 50s vibe to it. 
1947, as you can see, it's in the late 40s, a French designer named Christian Dior launched what he called the new look. The war was over, the men had returned home, and the new look gave women a softer, more feminine look and curve. This look was stylish, elegant, and reflected the opposite of wartime restrictions. He wanted to basically say, the war is over, let's show it the way the women dress. And it is elegant. So I love this black look on the right. Oh my gosh, this dress. Oh, I am obsessed. The hemlines fell just above the ankle, which honestly is one of my favorite hemlines if I had to choose. I love dresses and skirts that hit right above the ankle um, or like mid-calf. Love that. Um, the skirts were incredibly full. They used yards and yards of fabric and petticoats and crinoline and flounces of lace to create this really full look. The shoulder pad was dropped and the sloping soft shoulder replaced the squared manly look. The bust line was accented and the waistline was high and cin um, cinched in again. Some movies that represent the 40s really well is The League of Their Own and Memphis Bell. Um, a League of Their Own is a really, really good movie if you've never seen it. It just kind of goes into, it kind of shows um, an example of how women were treated in the 40s because what happens is all the men pretty much went to war. And so baseball was one of the main American pastimes of how people entertained themselves in the 40s. They would play baseball, they'd watch baseball. With all the men gone there wasn't really a baseball league anymore and so women decided to form their own um baseball league and so women were now playing baseball and um it just is a really good movie it talks about it shows kind of um it shows fashion in the 40s which is really it, sh and it shows a lot of really cool fashion and then it shows what the world was like what the war was like on women and how it was them trying to make them make them have a place in the world um, the 1950s, the new look continues, as you can tell, the big poofy skirts, um, the cinched waists, the soft shoulders. Also really love this look. And then in the 1950s, we also have a new term that had never been used before, and that is teenagers. That word and that term had never been created until the 1950s. Until the 1950s, the term teenagers had never been before coined. Children were known as girls and boys were called youths. During the 1950s, a range of influences, including film, television, magazines, and the rock music scene, created a new market grouping called Teenagers. Honestly, if you want to see what teenagers dress like in the 50s, watch Grease. It portrays the fashion so, 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 so well. And it just, it like, the fashion is spot on from the 50s if you watch Grease. Um, saddle shoes and capris were introduced and very popular. Saddle shoes are those black and white shoes uh, you see on the left, and then capris came to be for women at this time. Um, so that was a very popular look as well. Men, here are some some looks for the boys. This is for more of the um, the more mama's boy kind of more uh, what's the word behaved type look for boys. These weren't the bad boys; these were the good boys, and this is what they wore. Um, then we have the era of the rock and roll. The bad boys wore more of the tight jeans, the white t-shirts, and the leather jackets. And um, that was influenced by this lovely man right here named James Dean. Um, James Dean was the sex symbol of the 50s. He was, he's a beautiful man. I believe he died, I think from a, oh, I want to say two different things, but I'm not sure. I want to say a drug overdose or a car accident, and I could completely be wrong. I may be mixing him up with someone else, but I think that's how he died. He died very young, and um, his he he had a huge career uh, ahead of him before he died, and everybody loved him. You may have noticed he's um, he is a cultural icon. He's in um, the song Style by Taylor Swift. That um, daydream, James Dean, look in your eyes. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. My singing voice is beautiful. But, um, that's what she's referencing as James Dean. And so, um, he was, like I said, the sex symbol of the 50s. And here is the two different looks for women in the 50s. You had the good girl, um, straight A student, mama's girl, daddy's girl, never gonna break a rule type look, which is the poodle skirts. Um, and those skirts that have the Eiffel Tower, the phone, and the mouse mixing the cocktail on it. That was a very popular look. But then you had the little bit more of a rebellious look, which you can also see in Greece, that Rizzo wears with the tight, um, the pencil skirt type thing with the, um, the button-up shirt up tucked to the waist. Love that look. I, I, I love that look. 
Okay, then we have the other sex symbol of the 50s. This is um, Marilyn Monroe. She is what made the hourglass silhouette popular. She was what made everyone be like, oh, I love curves. Okay, so Marilyn Monroe kind of redefined what um, what was considered beautiful. Uh, actually, you know, if you really think about it, not really. She kind of has a lot of Gibson girl-like qualities just kind of in the 50s. If you if you really think about it, she's got the, the bouncing curls and like the, the big hair and the S curve. But um, this was, she was very popular in the 50s and she still is a cultural icon. Here you have some examples of some swimwear that was popular in the 50s. Women are getting a little bit more um, modern and they're becoming uh, much more comfortable and society is... I guess approving of them to kind of show more of their bodies. Men are rocking this nice little pajama look for their swimsuits. And that is the 50s, the 1900s to 1950s. I will post another video going um, through the 1960s to early day. I mean, sorry, not early day, till today.